guys, it's Kira and welcome back to another vlog. Haven't filmed a vlog in a couple of weeks so I feel like I have a lot of things to update you on. So without further ado, let us jump right into all of the updates. Starting with a highly anticipated release which I've just got my hands on and that is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. Now Beth O'Leary is one of my favourite romance writers. In fact, I'm going to go so far as to say she is my favourite romance author of all time. I just love her books. I think that they managed to combine like really light-hearted, funny romance with some serious gritty elements in a way that just like makes you really really feel for the characters but also like you can appreciate the struggles that they go through whilst knowing ultimately at the end of the day you are going to get a happy ending and I just love the way that her books play out. They are also always multiple perspectives so you get to see really detailed insights into characters that are quite different from each other and I just feel like you every Every time you finish one of her books you feel joy because they're just so fun, such fun narratives to follow along with and just really really joyful stories to read so I was so excited to get my hands on this one when it was released a couple of weeks ago but life and busyness have dictated that I haven't actually had time to start it yet but Beth O'Leary herself has described this one as her most ambitious novel to date so as I mentioned earlier she always writes at least two perspectives but this one has I think three if not four because this subtext to the title The No Show is three women, three dates, one missing man and essentially the book starts on Valentine's Day and we have three women and we get to see each of their first chapters and they're basically all on a date on Valentine's Day or rather they're supposed to be on a date but they get stood up and it turns out that they've all been stood up by the same man on the same day and essentially it's like a romance stroke mystery novel as we figure out like who all of the women are, who this man is, how he knows all of these women, how he came to invite them all on dates and then stand them up and basically where on earth he has gone. So I'm super excited to dive in because I do think this sounds like such a fun book and I know I'm gonna love it because it's Beth O'Leary. So there we have it, update number one. I have a great book and I can't wait to share my thoughts on it with you all this week. Next up, kind of crazy, I know, but I'm very excited and also slightly terrified to say the words that I have signed up for my first ever half marathon. Now to my current point in life which is age 24 the furthest I have ever run is 10 kilometers and to put that into context 10 kilometers is about six miles and then a half marathon is 13.1 miles so so far what I'm capable of is about half of what I need to be capable of and I currently have about 21 weeks between now and the date of my half marathon race to get up to speed and literally up to speed and just like get confident with the distance of a half marathon so I'm kind of terrified because it, it's far more than I've ever done before and I mean a half marathon is no small thing like it is quite a big challenge and most people will never do one but I decided I wanted to and so I did. Well, I did sign up for one. I can't say I've completed it yet, but when I sign up for something, I very rarely like fail to do it because I'm quite determined when I give myself no other choice but to be determined. And I think recently I've just been feeling like with fitness, like I go to the gym every day, I do yoga and it's all very fun and everything and I enjoy it, but I feel like I've been lacking a goal or a challenge where I've got like a particular thing that I need to achieve and so signing up for this half marathon is a huge challenge because it's far more than I've ever done before but that was exactly what I wanted because it's filled me with so much excitement and motivation because I know like I have to train for something very specific and that is a very particular end goal in mind and so I'm really really excited about it but because it's something I've never done before I really wanted to share the training journey with you guys on the channel channel because I for one have definitely fallen victim to seeing people doing things like marathons and half marathons and other crazy fitness things and thinking like oh well they are just like a, an athletic person naturally and like this is just what they're good at but it couldn't be me and actually I kind of want to dispel that myth and I really love seeing people's full training journeys because while it's exciting to see someone just finish a race you have no idea what work has gone into that and I think I really want to show that training journey from someone who is like quite a like novice runner don't like have huge amounts of experience or skill I'm definitely not like a naturally good runner and hopefully kind of show that transition through like hard work and training and consistency to someone who can run the best half marathon that I'm capable of like I don't really care what the actual time is at this point it's my first ever one so the time can be whatever the time is going to be as long as I know that I've put in 
all of the work and all of the consistency to my training so that when I cross the finish line, I know it's the best time I could have achieved because I know I've put the work in. So I wanna share that training journey with you all so that we can kind of see that transition from right now, not being able to run a half marathon to September, when I will be running the Great North Run. So quite different from the content that I usually share, but it's content that I love to watch. And I'm trying to get more in tune with kind of making the stuff that I actually watch myself. And so we'll be sharing a lot of running things on this channel. And maybe we'll do some like reading and running videos where I listen to audiobooks on my longer runs and we chat about books whilst I'm getting through the training. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I'm running a half marathon. So that's kind of crazy, but mostly exciting. And the final update, to share with you all if this like intro wasn't long enough already is that I have never in my life won a competition but recently I entered an Instagram competition which was just one of those like comment to win situations and I won what can only be described as the best competition that I could have ever won in my life and it was this little thing which is Crosstown Donuts combination with pip and nut almond butter because they have a collaboration out at the moment which is a cinnamon roll filled with almond butter custard it is of course vegan and then they've also made a cinnamon roll flavor almond butter and i bloody won the competition and it arrived today and i'm so excited so i thought i would reveal the delights that i have waiting for me I mean, look at that. Got friggin' cinnamon rolls filled with almond butter. That could not be more me if it tried. So that was exciting. And I just had to share because quite frankly, I could never win another competition again in my entire life. And I would be satisfied because the one competition that I have won was just like the most ideal thing in the whole world for me. Like almond butter, I eat it every single day. Cinnamon rolls, I love them. They're my favorite thing to bake. Put them together and you just like couldn't have got a better combination. So I'm very excited about that. I'm not eating one right now though because it is currently Wednesday afternoon, just finished work for the day. I'm just waiting for Sarah to come around because we are going out for a celebratory dinner. Some news that she has is that she's just accepted a place on a PhD programme. So in three years time, she's gonna be Dr. Sarah Chadwick. And um, so we're going out to celebrate tonight with pizza. And then we'll of course be having some donuts when we get back, but yeah. Welcome to the vlog. This is the longest intro in the whole world. So if you made it this far, congrats to you. Um, and I'll catch up with you later on when I'm eating a delicious pizza outside in the sun and living my best life. Friday evening, the weekend has officially started and so naturally I'm sitting at home on the sofa, curled up in my pyjamas with a good old book. Finally got a chance to make a proper start on the no-show this evening and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm on page 71, which means that while I'm still in like the first quarter of the book, I have had chance to see a few chapters from each of the three women's perspectives. So I feel like I'm gradually getting to know them a bit better. We have Siobhan, Jane and Miranda. And although we're getting an equal amount of chapters from each of the three women, at this point, I feel like Miranda is the one that we've gotten to know the best. I just feel 
feel like she's the one who we've had like the most detail about or potentially like the most has been given away about her and her investment in the relationship with this guy who stood her up. Whereas the other two women, Jane and Siobhan, feel a little bit more elusive at this point. But of course, there's still so much more of the book left to go. And I'm really excited to see where it goes because we now have this man, Joseph Carter, who it turns out has stood up all of these women and is now going around to each of them and trying to like make up for what he's done. But we as the reader still have absolutely no clue whatsoever why he stood them up, what's going on, and of course why he's seeing three different women all at once and none of them know that he's playing them. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. And I think it feels very different from any other Beth O'Leary book because knowing that he is essentially like playing these women against each other and lying to them and manipulating them means that I'm not rooting for any of the relationships whereas in every other Beth O'Leary book you really have like a romantic interest to like root for and you kind of have a direction that you're hoping it's going to take but at this point in this book it certainly isn't Joseph Carter that I want any of the women to end up with but I don't know who or who they'll end up with or how it will be resolved but of course that makes it all the more exciting to carry on reading and see what happens. Obviously as some of you may know I have three day weekends at my job, the pl whole place does a four day work week so I've had today off of work but I have been really busy starting off with a very exciting trip to Tesco to do the weekly food shop. I then went out and did a 5k time trial which is of course part of my half marathon training and I'm very happy to say that for the first time ever I did a sub 30 minute 5k which for any fast runners out there is really not that impressive at all but it's a goal that I've been wanting to work towards for a very long time and so I was so excited when I did it but I literally finished the 5k collapsed on the grass in the park where I finished my little route and a man walking his dog was having such a good chuckle at me because I probably looked like such a dramatic person having just like collapsed on the ground panting and trying to like gain my composure because I was so tired but it was a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying the experience of pushing myself and just seeing like what I can do with running because I really do feel like before I just kind of like ambled along doing it here and there but I've never really dedicated myself to training when it comes to running so I'm really excited to see what I can achieve now that I am. So that's my Friday, I'm going to spend the rest of the evening in this exact position, probably going to get up a couple of times to make a cup of tea but that is about it in terms of movement for the rest of the day so I'm just going to do some more reading of the no-show, probably try and find a film to watch and last weekend was Easter so I still have some vegan Easter eggs waiting to be eaten so I reckon I'll probably dig into one of them tonight as well. had a lot of very sunshiny weather recently which obviously I am a big fan of and it was looking very nice this morning as soon as I woke up at about 6am so me and Jay went out for an early morning walk to make the most of that before he headed off to work and I'm so glad that we did because right as we were coming home from that walk at about 8 o'clock it suddenly got very very grey, very windy, very cold and today is now looking quite miserable and so if we were the type of people that slept in we would have only seen a grey day but luckily we got up early enough to at least see some sunshine before it all went away and turned into a quite cold, quite miserable and just very uninspiring day. I am about to head out for a coffee with Em and Sarah and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe some sunshine comes back before this afternoon because I actually have a five mile run to do on my half marathon training plan today so I am currently wearing my sports clothes I decided to put these on straight away this morning before I headed out for my coffee because if the weather stays miserable I know that by the afternoon my motivation is going to be quite low for going out for that run so I figured that by like putting on my sports clothes right now rather than putting on like jeans and a top hopefully I'm kind of like 
reverse psychologizing myself and making me think that I'm ready to go out for the run just by putting on the right outfit. Don't know if that actually works, but I'm trying it out because I am, come rain or shine, going out for that five mile run. But if sunshine comes out, that will obviously make it a lot nicer. But either way, I'm going out, I'm braving it. But before I do, I'm gonna fuel myself with some coffee and a nice little catch up with Em and Sarah. And then yeah, it's time to run. So wish me luck, but actually, I don't need luck. I think it'll be fine, it'll be fine. I'm just really trying to like uh, harness that positive mindset when it comes to running because while I've had some really lovely weather for runs lately, I also need to like get in the habit of going out no matter the weather and just being able to run regardless of the circumstances because who knows what the weather will be like on race day. So all that to say, I'm about to go out for coffee and then a five mile run. I look like someone who just got absolutely battered by wind for five miles straight that would be because I am in fact someone who just got home for a run where I got battered by the wind from every which direction for five miles straight and oh my god I don't think until you are out there trying to run against wind that you realize like how much of an impact that has on your pace and just your ability to like get into a comfortable rhythm because wind was coming at me from every direction Direction. And it was also very strange because it was really sunny so on a good note the weather did turn around and the grey weather disappeared and the sun came out so that was quite nice and it meant that I was like basking in the sun throughout the rest of the run and kind of squinting because it was that sunny but then I was also getting wind from every direction so bits of dust were flying at me, my eyes were watering because of how windy it was so I'm gonna say that wasn't the best run but not every run is gonna be the best run, but what is the important thing is getting out there and getting it done, and I did that. So that is another training run ticked off the list, five miles done, which is the longest run I've done so far in training. And yeah, I can't say that I loved it because it was a difficult one, but I am really enjoying the process and like definitely enjoying getting out there for my runs and seeing myself going further and further. And it's just nice to get to the end and know that you have like taken a step closer to your goal. So did my run, absolutely battered by the wind. And now you better believe that because I have already done my socializing for the day and my exercising for the day, I'm about to get in the shower, put my pajamas on and relax for the rest of the day. Relaxation is gonna come in two forms this afternoon. The first one, of course, being to dive into more of the book that I'm reading, and the title has completely escaped me. Beth O'Leary. The No Show. God, don't know where that went in my head, but yeah, I'm gonna do some more reading of the no-show and hopefully make some good progress with that book because I have quite a few hours before Jay gets home from work, so plenty of time to enjoy some reading. And then the other form of relaxation is that I'm feeling very Sally Rooney at the moment, and I think that is because Conversations with Friends, the TV show, is coming out in less than a month, but to kind of like hype myself up for that because I'm so excited, I thought that I might re-watch Normal People because I haven't watched that for quite a while but it is just a cinematic masterpiece and just absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna do some reading watch some normal people and just relax to the maximum level <laughs>
So it's now Sunday morning and I'm literally just about to head out to a yoga class but I wanted to share a little reading update. I managed to read my way up to page 156 yesterday, then Jay got home from work and for the last couple of days we've been watching The Pianist on our evenings. Obviously it's a great film but really really long and we have about 45 minutes left so it's taken us three days to watch it but it's so good. I feel like that's such an obvious statement because it is like such a critically acclaimed film but we've never seen it before and we just decided to watch it this week and it is incredible but also just like so devastating at the same time so that took up my evening yesterday so after Jay got home I didn't do any more reading but I am now about halfway through the no show and I'm enjoying this book to an extent but I have to say it's not looking like it's going to be up there as a favourite Beth O'Leary for me and I don't really know exactly why other than to say that I'm not particularly feeling connected to any of the characters and I think maybe that might come down to what I was saying yesterday which is the fact that I'm getting bad vibes from this guy because you know that he's kind of like lying to three different women and stringing them along and he has kind of like a chameleon style personality where he behaves as someone slightly different to each of these women so as the reader you don't feel like you know this romantic interest very well at all because you don't know who the real Joseph Carter is and then of each of the three women, although we are getting to know them, I just don't feel a huge connection with them and I think it really probably is just the fact that I can't be invested in the romance because I just don't buy into it because I know that it's built on lies and so I'm enjoying seeing the mystery of the book unfold and I'm definitely invested and want to know where it goes and what happens and how it is that these women like find out about the fact that they're being lied to and potentially what they do after they find that out like I'm very interested to see where it goes in that respect but I just don't feel as invested in this book as I'd expected to be or as I have been with Beth O'Leary's other novels so that's kind of disappointing but I am of course going to do some more reading today and hopefully make my way through. I might try and finish it today if I have time, who knows, but right now I'm going to a yoga class then I'm going to go meet my dad and my grandma and my brother for a coffee and then the rest of my Sunday is free. I don't have any running to do today so I can dedicate quite a bit of time to my reading. I just reached page 301 to be precise of the no show. This book has about 400 pages altogether so I'm pretty much three quarters of the way in and in my last lot of reading stint I was starting to get quite worried if I'm perfectly honest because I was still nearly three quarters of the way into the book not feeling connected to any of the characters and if I was to put a label on my reading experience of this book, it would have to be lacklustre. I obviously went into this with so much love for Beth O'Leary and therefore so much expectation for how great this book was going to be and it just was not matching up to that. And I think that's sad in any book where you really expect to like it and then don't. But I think it's even worse when it's an author that you love because you just have like this image in your mind of like how you're gonna feel reading a book. And when that isn't actually the reality, it just feels a little bit like demotivating for the whole reading experience. So that is how I was feeling until about page 280 when suddenly Beth O'Leary just went bam, here's something that you didn't expect. And she just basically dropped what felt like to me the missing puzzle piece right there onto the page and I would describe this feeling as almost like an earthquake in a book in the sense that everything that I thought I was reading and understanding and was very simple just suddenly shifted massively and everything that I thought I thought I knew was suddenly changed and I just feel like it dropped this even greater sense of mystery into a book that I already thought was a mystery and it was just well it was game changing basically because I wasn't enjoying the book to be honest I was feeling very just like uninspired by it and now I cannot wait to see what happens in the last hundred pages. I am still disappointed in the fact that it's taken nearly three quarters of the book to get me feeling this excited about it because I was hoping to have this level of like excitement for the novel all the way through but I won't complain because at least it's going to end on a high or at least that's the expectation I have now based on the information Beth O'Leary has just given us. So feeling a lot more positive about the reading experience which is good. I'm just about to go and pick Jay up from work, we'll come home, have dinner, watch the last like 45 minutes of The Pianist and then providing I'm still awake at that point I'll do some more reading and maybe even finish the book this evening.
I did it. I finished reading the no-show and I feel really, really bad that I allowed myself to doubt Beth O'Leary. I felt very conflicted about this book for a lot of the reading experience, but the ending was nothing like I expected and yet it just took me by surprise in such a like emotional way like it really wasn't the kind of narrative that I was expecting and there were so many elements that really sort of like blew me away and just like I was not expecting them in the slightest and I can't really say any more than that without giving away like really important elements of the book but what I will say is that it's definitely worth a read it is incredible. Beth O'Leary is a wonderful author who, as I think I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog, does a really incredible job of weaving together um, like humour, romance and really just light-hearted elements with some really really serious, dark and difficult to read storylines as well and she just blends these things together in such an incredible way and I really did think that this was an amazing book by the end of it. I gave it four stars in the end on Goodreads and I'm very happy to say that because at the point where, probably when I last spoke to you about like 300-ish pages in, I was thinking about giving this book three stars because although it wasn't a terrible book, I just wasn't really feeling that connection to the characters or the plot and I was feeling like mightily disappointed. But by the end, the way that it just like blew me away Pulled, like bowled me over and just like completely turned my expectations on their head I had to give it four stars. Certainly can't say it's my favourite of her books. I think my favourite, well there's no doubt about it, my favourite is The Flat Share and then that is followed by her second book which is The Switch because I just think that was such a fun and unique dynamic because we have this grandma and granddaughter switching places in each other's lives for a while to try and like figure out what they want to do and regain a sense of like adventure and control over their own narratives and I love that storyline but I'm struggling with where to place this between this and the road trip because I enjoyed both stories but categorically they're not my favourite of her books but either way I finished it, I enjoyed it and I'm so glad and so relieved that I can say that I enjoyed it because I was very worried at some point so there we have it, I finished the no-show and it was quite the roller coaster of a reading experience not the love at first page reading experience I was expecting but a good one nonetheless now before I finish up this vlog I have a fairly exciting announcement although it is one that is filling me with a lot of fear right now because my friend Mary and I who you might know from her channel Mary Among Stories have decided to kickstart a book club together which is going to be called the Big Books Book Club. Now this came about because last year we did two buddy reads together which was Middle March by George Eliot which is a huge book and then also It by Stephen King which notoriously is also a huge book and the reason we did those buddy reads together was because we have these huge books on our TBRs but they just feel so daunting to read on your own and also just much less enjoyable to think about diving into a huge book with no one else to talk about it with so we hosted those buddy reads and had such a fun time doing it that we thought that we would make it kind of an official thing and kickstart the big books book club so the book that we're going to be reading first together this year is going to be drum roll please the Count of Monte Cristo, which is so huge that I feel a little bit sick looking at it because it's just so gigantic. It has over a thousand pages and those uh, pages are filled with the tiniest of texts. So it's a lot of words, it's a lot of pages, it's a lot of book, but we're going to be tackling it together, me and Mary and hopefully some of you guys as well, and just trying to enjoy big books together. Now because of the name of this book club being that it's all about reading big books, I wanted to say that it's not going to be like a typical like read a book every month kind of book club. We're just going to be doing a couple of buddy reads every year and just trying to tackle some of these huge books, stay connected with each other, chat about our thoughts and just basically like take on the challenge together. So it's more so just to build a bit of community and make reading these huge books a little bit less daunting by doing it together. So we have a discord set up where we can chat about all of the books that we end up reading, of course starting with The Count of Monte Cristo, which we are going to be trying to read between now, which is May and July, so three months of reading this book and hopefully that's enough time to finish it. But 
I'll leave the Discord link down below as well as Mary's channel so you can go and check her out if you don't know her already. But essentially we're just going to be getting together, trying to read some big books and have fun doing it. So I feel like that is a lovely way to conclude this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on Beth O'Leary's newest book and I hope that some of you will want to join us for reading The Count of Monte Cristo as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.